Okay, chat, it's gonna be a long one. So, welcome into the season nine tier list. Now, I know it's a little early. I normally make these after about two weeks of playing of the new season, but uh, I think I'm in a pretty good spot to already have uh, uh, a good idea about it. Uh, forgive you a frame of reference so far this season. Uh, I have played 202 ranked games. It's Saturday. The season came out on Tuesday. Granted, and I haven't played it all today, Saturday, because uh, I slept. Um, so, yeah. I've played more games this season than I played all of Season 8, all of Season 7, all of Season 6, all of Season 5, all of Season 4, not Season 3, or 2, or 1. But we're getting there. <laughs> we're on pace. We've been, been playing a lot. A lot of games. So I think I'm in a pretty good spot to, to talk about it already. Um, and how so far the season's going. I'm going to set some precedents to start. Uh, I'm going to probably be talking about tanks for a good amount of time. Uh, because I think tanks are probably the thing that needs to be talked about it the most. That'll probably be a pretty long section. S tier is going to be probably reserved for what is the actual meta. Um, like best characters to play. Uh, period. In high level play. A tier is probably going to be closer to like what's good in ranked. Um, because S tier is probably the best if you have coordination and good players. However though, not everyone has that. So A tier might end up looking a little bit better for like the average gamer slash um, average ranked player. Uh, obviously subject, subject to change, it's still early in the season. Okay, now that I set the guidelines to the side and what's probably going to be the way we dictate this uh, and how we uh, I'm going to view it and how you should probably view it as well let's get started we'll start with tanks and I also will warn you I probably am going to come back to tanks a little bit as we go because uh, this is probably the season that uh, you need to be picking your tank way more off of your team comp and map than what you're good at First up, let's start with honestly probably the safest pick of all time, Sigma. Sigma is just game in, game out, always safe. He's been safe for seasons, many, many seasons. Uh, and the reason why is he has good survivability. He does good damage. He can kind of rely on his own. He's pretty good in, all, in almost every situation. However, though, because of the way the game is played at the moment, and a lot of it is based off of how the rest of your team picks. There will be times on certain maps that even though Sigma is always a safe pick, you go and feel like you're not doing not much, which is kind of awful. He's always good for poke, but if your team is running more of a dive or some type of rush on certain maps, you might want to reconsider. But there's still maps like Circuit Royale or Junker Town where he's still really, really good, but not S tier. I would say he's a very solid safe A though. Game in, game out, you could probably pick Sigma and win most of your games, but you're definitely going to get shit on in some games and feel like you can't do anything. Uh, certain maps, I would say like Circuit Royale, you probably can pick them and just like turn your brain off and be like, okay, we're good. Um, but things that are strong on the DPS side that really you help deal with, uh, Bastion, Widow, uh, Junkrat spam, uh, Sojourn a little bit, Torb kind of too, like poking out his turret and whatnot, uh, and also spamming out their tank um, because of the way the support lineups work this season. A lot of very low healing comps are very good. Um, so remember, Sigma does a lot of damage with his left click. Uh, if you hit your shots, they're just kind of difficult. It's really hard to miss the tank. So if their tank's just standing there half the time, you can get a lot of value just shooting at their tank. Because what ends up happening is if your DPS just keep tagging him over and over, their tank's getting less healing, you're doing good damage, their low healing support comps are pretty common at the moment. Plus the passive, if they get discorded on top of that, you can get some pretty good value. But here's the problem though. In my personal opinion, unless you are tank gapping the literal fuck out of their Sigma or their tank, you feel like you don't get much value. Like you don't feel like you have control over the game, which sucks. Uh, I can't tell you how many games I've had where there's just like a uh, a widow or, or a, a Zen that's just the server admin taking over the whole game. And there's not much you can do. 
The only thing you can do is your, do your job, do your role. Sigma's pretty good, but not S tier. Uh, I'm gonna put Maga a little bit in the back for now, uh, because I think we can talk about that later. Uh, I think we should go to the other, arguably better of the tanks that are not the best. Uh, I would throw Ramacha probably in B. Or, nah, probably B. I think B is probably safer. Yeah, B is probably safer. This is the best rush tank in the game at the moment. This is the best rush tank. Uh, now, you might be saying, what's a rush tank? I mean, your Vrine, your Zarya, your Orisa, even though technically she's more like Wally and Sustainy, I would argue she's more Brawl and could be used in rush in some ways, um, but like not traditional rush uh, per se, but, and then Joker Queen as well. Um, Ramach is the best one out of all of them and still in B tier. And the reason you're in B tier is because you still get like destroyed by Ana, who's not that great at the moment. But if they swap Ana, you're f***ed. Uh, but really Zen, Zen f you up, uh, Break Kit can push you away. And realistically right now dives meta. So you don't get a lot done. That's the problem, right? Uh, we'll come back and talk about Ramach in a little bit. Uh, there's not a lot to talk about now. It talks more about the support stuff. But you actually can't play Ramatra on very many maps. Uh, ones that you can are like Lijiang Tower Control Center, King's Row. I'm trying to think if there's been many of the others. New Junk City. New Junk City, Ramatra is pretty good on New Junk City. Uh, basically anything that's super linear with chokes, like very small, hard chokes, you can run them on. Oh yeah, Oasis um, uh, Library? I forget, it's the one with the hole in the middle that you can jump pad through. Or not jump pad through, um, the megas down there. University, university. It's pretty good in university, too. Um, but yeah, Ramacha's really not that good. Samoa? Mm, maybe the one with the lava? Yeah, the one with the lava, I would say, is probably okay. The other two, not really. Um... The other two are a little too open. It's really that bad. Like, Rush is genuinely that bad this season. So, it's up to you. Okay, next up, Junker Queen. Uh, I would argue Junker Queen's worse than Ramatra, uh, but not by a ton. But I would still put her in B, but Ramatra's still better. This is like B plus versus B minus. Uh, Junker Queen S tier. What? Are you high? What the f Hey, you're in the hey, what no way in the tw in my Twitch side someone said that, dude. I I would expect that out of TikTok. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? Dude, you're 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 out of your mind. Rush is terrible. Rush is not good. And on certain maps, I've seen people run Junker Queen, but you can run Ramatra too and do the same shit. Like Junker Queen isn't very good. Like the, like okay, you want to know what Junker Queen does? Junker Queen's best thing is running in with Shout and giving her team shout. That's it. Jugger Queen f***ed me up yesterday. Okay, let me give you a thing. Whataboutism is very strong. Whataboutism, it does not mean reality. If you lose a game, I lost a game to a Roadhog yesterday. Does that mean Roadhog's S tier? No. Why did I lose a game against the Roadhog? Because it was five in morning, and I had two hitscan out of voice that were E-daters with matching names that played Sojourn Ash on Samoa, in which they literally never peaked him. That was it. And they just sat there and killed us because we couldn't do anything. And they ran Reaper May, Reaper May, Zen, Lucio. And so we couldn't get near them. And they just sat away from us and just killed us. And that was it. So Jugger Queen is just like the other version, I would say. But like Ramach is just way better. Ramach is better. Uh, and the reason why Ramach is better is you have more health. Uh, if you're playing, running Rush, you're just running into them. So like the cleave of punch is pretty good uh, if you happen to get them. Uh, but realistically, the extra armor, the blocking, that's what's really like the king that's just the way it's gonna go and unfortunately if you're a rush enjoyer this is probably not the season for you and that's okay ryan let's just you know what let's just let's just be honest with ourselves shit tier bottom of the barrel worst honestly might be worst character in the game and we got gaslit by all the doom players at the start of the season saying that doomfist was gonna be the worst and maybe that was because of the bugs, but all of a sudden I see Doomfist like everywhere. And I think Doomfist is actually low key pretty decent, at least in ranked. But Rhine and Hog are probably the two worst tanks, I would argue. 
but Hog has at least the place of he can sit there and try not to die in a corner and be annoying to try to 1v1. Ryan can't do anything. Anything. You're not threatening at range with Fire Strike anymore because of the extra health every character has. Every character has extra health, so even the window Fire Strike combo is gone. You can't kill some a Squishy with back-to-back -back Fire Strikes anymore. If you hit back-to-back -back Fire Strikes, which, granted, is very difficult to do, you cannot get a kill. It's not possible. Not possible. Your swings do as much damage. But the problem is, is the classic example. We've talked about this many times in the past. Where as if we were designing a simple game where we were having 1v1s in an open field. And you could choose between a sniper, a pistol, and a melee character. The sniper character will always beat the melee character. Because the melee character can never get close enough to kill them. In the Overwatch team's version of trying to make the melee character more viable. Is instead of buffing the amount of damage the melee character can take. To then reach the sniper and stab them and kill them. They've instead decided to make the knife do more damage. They gave him a bigger sword. And it's like, bro, are you dumb? <laughs> like, come the f*** on. Ryan's kind of terrible. Even the 650 HP or whatever. What is it? 670? No, it's 675. The 675 HP is how much Ryan had in the first beta of Overwatch 2. Let that sink in. Remember last year when Overwatch 2 was before it was going to come out? Actually, sorry, it was almost two years ago now, 2022. The first beta, the first public beta in April of 2022, Ryan had 675 HP. And that was when it was normally there. Hold on, where's the clip of Cloudy instantly exploding? Can you find it for me? So, oh yeah, for those who don't know, even, even notorious Ryan Connoisseur himself. Guy's been playing Ryan since the beginning of the beginning of time. Cloudy himself. They finally did it. They killed Ryan. It took seven years and I surrender. Useless hero, time to wrap up the hammer and charge from change from Ryan Bros to Ram Bros. It's Jover GG's. You know it's bad at that point. You, you know it's bad at that point. Wait, you got a clip? What's this? Okay, so we all see he's full HP over here, right? And also look at the top left, okay? So let's, let's take a look at the top left hand corner right here. Bring your attention to here, okay? Hey, TikTok. I know you guys struggle with the attention stuff sometimes. So hey, up here, top left. Full health. That's what's shield up. Shields up. Shields up. Full HP. In front of a window, they pop the window. They pop the window. No person. There isn't a human on the planet who has that kind of reaction speed. That's not, that's not viable. That shouldn't be a thing. If you sit there and go, well, they pop window. I don't give a fuck. There shouldn't be a world where he's full HP with shield in which in literally less than a fraction of a second, they go all the way from full to zero. There isn't a human alive who will react to that in time. Because you can hear it. You can hear it being deployed. It just deployed. It literally just appeared. You can see it. It's not there. It's now there. That is less than a fraction of a second. I don't care if there's a window. I don't care. That's literally two frames. I don't give a shit. That's insane. And you know why it's like that? Because there's a BAP and there's a Zen and a Sojourn. The Zen Discord goes on to him, I guarantee, we can't see it yet, but I guarantee the Discord Orb appears. Discord Orb is probably goes on him. Wait, it doesn't even. I actually, we can't tell in the replay viewer. It's car it's way too hard to tell. I need like an actual replay viewer to see. I would bet that there's a Discord Orb on him. You see it? I don't see it. Do you see it?
Is that it right there? I did. I saw it. I saw it for one frame. I saw it for one frame. There it is. There it is. One frame. It was so chat. It was so fast. It was so fast that the Discord orb animation, like the actual animation hadn't appeared yet. He's dead at this frame. I know, but I'm saying it was so fast that the Discord animation for like showing you you got Discord hadn't even appeared yet. Alright, let's walk out. Three, two, one, walk in. Let's be doing. <laughs> That's 0 0.25 seconds. Look how fast I die. That's 0 0.25 and I'm used to that. Dude, no human can react to that. It's literally not possible. So, anyways, though, uh, point of this whole thing is Ryan's terrible. Character's dead. I've been telling you for years how to fix it. Nobody listens to me. I don't care. F you. Character's dead. All right, let's move on. Doomfist. All right, Doomfist is a hard one for me here because low key, I think Doom's actually pretty good in ladder play. I think Doom's actually pretty good. Okay, I'm gonna follow my heart. I don't care. I'm I'm done listening to the fucking Doom players. I'm done listening to them. I'm done. I'm actually done listening to them. They all, uh, you know what? People give Mercy players a lot of fucking shit and say that they whine and they complain and they like they bully the devs into releasing new skins early. I don't care. You know what? Doom players can play way more than Mercy players. They do. They fucking complain way more. And granted, I understand there's a lot of bugs. There's a lot of shit, right? I get it, but I'm a Ryan player, bro. You can't tell me shit. You can't tell me. You can't tell me shit. Okay, dude. You can't tell me shit. The dome players, dude, they complain more than anything. And I know your characters bug the hell, but your character doesn't suck. A character doesn't suck. And it's pretty good. In ladder play. In ladder play, of course. Ladder play. I don't, and, and once you get up in the higher light ranks, he kind of falls off quite a bit. But there's a lot of reasons for that. But yeah, I think Doom is actually very viable this season. And the reason why is because all the dive tanks are good. Winston's good, Diva's good, Ball is meta. Doomfist is like the fourth horseman of that, right? And you'll think of big bits. I appreciate it. He's like the fourth horseman of the, uh, you know, he's like the fourth horseman of the, of the dive tags. Might not be the best out of all of them, and definitely has some flaws. But in ladder play, people don't know how to play against Doom half the time, and they give him a punch, and they just starts rolling you, and your support starts screaming and crying and shitting him on the floor. And, you know, I get it. But realistically, you'll probably thrive because most people don't like to swap. Yeah, you could probably go Sombra and shut him down quite a bit. But most people don't want to play Sombra. You know what I mean? So it's like, that's tough. That's just, that, it, that is what it is. That's the way it's going to go. I think if you're a good Doom player, uh, this is probably going to be a good season for you. Uh, and you're gonna have a good time. That's 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 what I think. Obviously, I'm not a Doom player, so I don't have the most experience with Doom. Uh, but every time I play against a good Doom, they do a lot of sh they they get a lot done, and people don't seem to know how to deal with them. So, dude. Uh, Orisa, Orisa is okay. I think she's pretty decent in some situations, which I feel bad for putting her in C tier, but she's definitely worse than Ram. I don't know if I should say she's worse than Junker Queen. Because Junker Queen definitely has some spots. Maybe Junker Queen needs to be in C. I'm doing it. I'm following my heart. I'm putting Junker Queen's like a C plus. And Arissa's like a C. Period. What is good about Arissa? Arissa's a wall, right? This season is the season of trying to survive. As tank players, we're being hunted. We're like wild animals on the safari. We're out on the safari, trying not to die to the lions, the cheetahs, the, the buffaloes, the hippos. And then there's poachers. That's the Zen players, okay? You got to be careful of those. The poachers, the Zen players are the scary ones. But then you got the lions, the cheetahs, the 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 the. Uh, uh, the uh, jaguars, you know, you got, you got elephants running, or like, we're, we are basically like, really, we're like albino giraffes, okay, we're giant, we're running around, we have no camouflage, and people can see us, so all we can do is just kind of trot away, and try to like, swing our big ass neck at shit, we're, we're, 
liked. But what Arissa's really good at is just being a goddamn tank, okay? Arissa's like an elephant, all right? It, it it's probably could do a lot of shit if you get close to it, but otherwise it's just a giant ass target, you know? And, and, and to the poachers, you know, they're, they're looking for you and you can't really hide that well. And you get close, you can do some stuff, but you ain't getting close, right? So what Arissa's good at is standing there and being an absolute dick to their tank. Arissa is the, I don't get to have fun, so neither do you get to tank, all right? So if they're playing like Queen, if they're playing like Hog, if they're playing like Rhine, uh, if they're playing even Ramatra in some cases, um, you're basically like, you, you don't get to have fun anymore. And you stop them from having fun, right? Like, you. Or even, even Doom in some ways, but a little bit less so to Doom, but yeah. Um, Aris is just the you tank that's it right but like your impact on the game goes no further than stopping their dps from or sorry their tank from having fun so if their tank is gapping the f out of you or rolling your team and especially in rush you just go arisa and then all of a sudden you can't play the game you don't get to play the game anymore that's it gg good luck go f yourself but that doesn't mean she's a good character that doesn't mean you're gonna have a lot of impact your impact is just denying their tank from having impact so then it becomes a 50-50 coin flip on is your DPS and support better than their DPS and support? And if the answer is yes, you'll win the game. If the answer is no, you're f***ed. So, you know, it is what it is. That's why I want to put her in C tier uh, because she's literally just the, the, the f their tank. tank. Uh, it's not a way to actively win the game. It's not a way to actively have an impact. It's just, I you just remove another player from the equation and see what happens. So, has a place. Turn your brain off, can do well with her, but you're just gonna sit there and do nothing. That's why you ignore her, lol. Okay, yeah, try ignoring Marissa when you're playing Queen, Ramatra, Ryan, even Zarya in a lot of cases, or Roadhog. Let me know how that goes for you. Let me know how that goes. Uh, unless you're playing an Arissa who literally is, a, like their monitor turned off. Hell, they might, like, Arissa players, if you're playing Hog versus an Arissa, they could turn their monitor off because you know what? They'll find you on Smell because of your smelly ass Hog player. Like, <laughs> yeah, he's over here. They'll find you because that's how you play Arissa. You just bully their tank. They're just going to chase you around. Oh, yeah. Good luck ignoring her. All right. Um, all right. Let's get this one out of the way. The, the easy S tier of the tanks uh, ball. Crazy how ball went from being like the worst tank in the game to the best tank of the game. Uh, with these changes and the reason why that is is because this is the survivability season the whole reason you pick ball is to survive not joking you literally just run for your life what you do is either you roll through their team or you slam on their zen or whoever you can and then run don't even try to shoot them unless your tracer's there if you have a tracer to follow up then nah you're bugging you know there was a tournament yesterday, right? And every team ran Ball Zen, Lucio. Literally every single team. Like, I'm not joking. Like, every single team. And then if every time I played in ranked with actually good players, that's what we run. That's that's literally meta. You're not, you're not going to sit here and tell me otherwise. I'm not a Ball player. You think I like playing Ball? You think I'm trying to force Ball propaganda on you and be like, Oh, no, yeah, everybody play Ball. Yeah, it's going to be... No, I'm just telling you the truth. I'm the messenger. Don't shoot the messenger, okay? I'm already being hunted out of extinction in this season. Ball, the whole reason you play Ball is genuinely just survivability. You run for health packs. I'm not joking. You run for health packs. That's how you play the game. You run as fast as you can. The entire time you play tracer sombra or tracer genji if it's ranked but in like more organized it's tracer zen or Tr tracer genji uh or tracer sombra and then you have like lucio zen as your backline which is again what is the whole reason why i want to talk about tanks longer is because of it's basically off of what the rest of your team runs but ball is by far best tank uh if you are a really good ball player you'll probably thrive this season so uh, Malga. Uh, I am not convinced on Malga. Um, I think Malga's not very good. But I have lost... No, I haven't lost to him, actually. That's not true. I have won a point on Malga, though. Uh, I won third point Blizzard World playing Malga. And I we won it pretty handily. They went Bastion, Zen, Brig, Winston. And I said... Dude, what happens if I go Maga and just shoot the Bastion as hard as I can? 
and I killed the Bastion and I lived. And I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. Uh, but then I played against Amalga and he charged into my team and he popped like a balloon. And then I played against another Amalga and I went Arissa and I sent him to the Shadow Realm every fight. Like that guy probably uninstalled after the game. Uh, so I'm not sure if I'm sold on, on him being able to do anything. Uh, but I don't, I think he's low key slept on. Low key slept on for ranked. Anything, any type of coordinated play, absolutely not. Character's gonna be terrible. But in ranked, I think you could probably bully some Winstons. I think there's a possibility, potentially, against really bad, like Ramatra or Rhine. Or uh, maybe not Rhine, actually. I don't know about Rhine. Um, Maybe Winston or Ball. Maybe. Or Hog. We'll see. But yeah, I don't think... I would not advise you to play Mog. Winton. Uh, I would argue Winton is probably... Is again with the Four Horsemen of Dive. Uh, one of the better tanks this season. Um, I've been playing a lot of Winston, actually. Uh, yesterday, I kind of started to catch my stride on how to play Winston again. Uh, but the way you play Winston is different than old Winston. And the reason why you might struggle is if you've been playing Winston for years, you don't play Winston the same way anymore. You play Sniper Monkey. Yep. You play Sniper Monkey. You sit there and you don't move. And so, okay. I was struggling the other day with Tank. And I was talking to Emong. Okay. And I said, Emong, I don't understand, dude. I don't know what's going wrong. I, I, I can't figure it out. And he's like, what do you mean? And I'm like, dude, I die every fight. And he goes, oh, I, I, it's flat. It's simple. You're just doing one thing wrong. And I go, what am I doing wrong? He goes, well, you know how you normally played corners like the previous se seasons? Like, you're like, oh, try not to die. Like, oh, you're like, oh, try not to die. Oh, oh, got shot. I go behind the corner. He just said, no, no, no. Flats, what you're doing wrong is, so when you go behind the corner, uh, this season, instead of going here, you just, you just go over here now. I was like, what? And he goes, just go, just go further into the corner because you ain't going to get to peek again. I was like, oh. And so you know what I started doing last season? I start poke, 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 get shot at. Play prop hunt. Unironically, that was that was what he, I, I'm not joking. That's what he said to me. He said, unironically, think like as if you're playing prop hunt. And so I started playing yesterday, playing prop hunt. I played Sigma and the most amount of kills I got was by sneaking up on people because I have no footsteps, rocking them, left clicking them, melee them, left clicking them again, killing them and floating away. And so on Winston, what I've been doing this season is I sit there and I just poke the entire time and I do nothing until I see my tracer go on somebody. If I have a tracer and they're on somebody and they're like half HP, I'm in, baby. I'm going in. But only if they're by themselves. <laughs> there has to be like a there's like an order of operations, right? There has to be tracer has to be on them. There have to be taking damage. They have to be isolated from teammates. Boom, we're going in. But if they're not. Ah, sorry, buddy. I'm sit up top. Because what ends up happening is you take less damage. This is why Ball's meta, by the way. You take less damage, which means that your DPS can keep doing more. And your supports don't have to work on healing. They just sit there and do damage the entire time. And so your supports are balling out and doing all this damage. And they don't have to worry about healing you because you take less healing anyways because the 20% DPS passive and everybody's running Zen. So you're getting the 20% discord. So you're taking 20% more damage and you're receiving 20% less healing. So you're taking 40% more damage when Zen is on the win play every game. You take 40% more damage every game when Zen is in play. So what's the point of going in and tanking? Just sit on the side and wait. And that's how you win. I'm not joking. That's how I've been winning every game. Not every game, but like... There's games where you get like hardcore DPS gapped, but because DPS are the most impactful role this season and it's not even close, but you want to play Winston that season? I would argue that Winston's probably one of the better tanks to play, uh, especially as a ladder player. Um, very good. Very, very good. Not meta, but very, very good. I would advise you to learn how to play Winston this season or ball. Zarya. Uh, I think Zarya is not terrible. I think Zarya has a place in some places. Uh, however, she's not as good as like Ramatra. I think Ramatra is just better. Um, but a high charge Zarya can be scary. The problem is though, is Rush is terrible. So when you play Zarya, you're not going to get as much done. Um, you're not going to get as much charge either. So like 
basically the way you play Zarya is like sitting there and trying to bubble shit the entire time and like not bubbling yourself, which is really ass. So like, this is like, if you wanna play Rush on a Rush map and you don't play Ramatra and you like, like, you know what I mean? Like you're not gonna do that well. Like I played against Harb, like you don't know Harb Blue. Harb Blue is like really, really good. Harb played Zarya versus me. Um, and I was playing Sigma at first and he, put, he went Zarya and it was threatening. Cause like run, just run, run at you when you're on Sigma. Um, you know, cause like on certain maps, like it's hard cause you have to like contest, push certain chokes, right? Um, but then I just went Winston and all of a sudden they just couldn't like, he wasn't doing nearly as much anymore, you know? Uh, so Zarya is not terrible. No, that's that's pretty true. She's pretty bad. Uh, if I had to rent I'd follow this ranking. So like Junker Queen's probably the best C tier. Orisa's better C tier. Zarya is like low C tier, but I wouldn't put her in the same tier as like Malga, right? Um, I think Malga's probably like a step lower, and then Ryan's a step step lower than 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 Malga. Uh, but like this could this could be interchangeably like i i wouldn't mind putting d plus or c minus i don't think there's like a big difference but like just trying to drive it home that like probably not the best and eh, you know what dude uh you know what i uh, i wouldn't put her on the same category as junker queen i already moved junker queen down from b to c i think it's only fair yeah i think that's fair actually if I put if I put Junker Queen in C because I don't put her on the same level as Ramatra, I don't put Junker Queen on the same level as Zarya. So you know what? That's fair. Yeah, that's better. Okay, I like that a little bit more. That's fair. <sighs> okay, Roadhog. Um, Roadhog is pretty bad. Uh, Roadhog is pretty bad. Uh, I I will say he has at least the niche of just try to stand there and try not to die. Uh, done pretty good. Uh, but he's pretty bad. Uh, you can't one shot hook. Even with your trap, uh, it's not possible. Um, your spam isn't really that good. Uh, your only good thing is if like they have a Doomfist who's running at your team, you could probably hook him a lot more. Um, or a ball, but you're not going to hurt the ball, so like that's not very useful. But yeah, I would say Hog's not good. I, I very rarely lose games to Hog. Uh, I've only lost like two games to Hog this season, I think. And like both those games were very easily winnable. Our team which is kind of like idiotic. I would not advise it. Isn't he worse than Ryan? No, I would at least, Ryan is terrible. Shit tier, not even close. Um, Hog, at least I would argue has like some, something to him. Six has kind of gave up on Hog. Dude, Six gave up on Hog. And Cloudy gave up on Ryan. Yo, this season, GG's and it's for tanks. Good lord. All right, let's see the last tank, shall we? Diva. Easy A tier. Uh, again, I already talked about it. I kind of gave it away earlier with the four horsemen of dive. Uh, Diva, you know what? Let me rearrange these tanks. Uh, I would argue Diva's probably the best out of these, then Winston, then Sigma, then Doom. Diva's better than Winston. Uh, if you're a really good D.Va, because what you can do on D.Va is just be the f asshole who just plays blow up the tank. Uh, so if their Winston tries to engage you, all you do is just turn around and kill the Winston every fight. Uh, if you want to see someone be really good at it, watch Emong do it. Emong's very, very good at it. He's f annoying um, <laughs> when he plays D.Va versus Winston. And I, I'm telling you that from firsthand experience. It's very goddamn annoying. Uh, but it's 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 a god it's a really good play style. It, it it really works. It really works. It it's it sucks to play against, but he's goddamn good at it. Uh, <laughs> so, but yeah, if you wanna, you know, if you wanna if you wanna figure out how to play uh play Diva this season, probably a good person to watch for it. Uh, but Winston is still very good. You just got to be a lot more careful playing against Diva than you would playing against any other character. Uh. But if you play D.Va, she's even pretty good against Ball. Because uh, you can save people that are getting dove by the Ball comp. So D.Va has a very good place this season. All right, that's all the tanks. Um, there's probably stuff to come back to in a little bit. Because I think tanks is probably the most to talk about this season. Uh, but yeah, tank is very wildly across the board. As you can see from this, we have tanks in S tier and F tier. Which is kind of crazy. So it is what it is. You know, it is what it is. DPS this season um, obviously had some major changes. 
uh, with the projectile sizes to all characters and particularly hit scan are some big winners. So you might notice as this list goes on that the hit scan heroes will be closer to the top while the projectile, even though they look much bigger and better, will likely be closer to the bottom. Start off strong, soldier in the easy A tier. Easy A tier. Soldier isn't like meta in team play, um, but for, again, if you remember, if you missed the beginning of this, S tier is pretty much like hardcore meta, top tier coordination play. A will be like your really good ranked. Like you can play these in ranked game in game out, win most of your games. Uh, and then like, as you go down, it's like more niche, map dependent, team comp dependent, whatnot. Soldier's easy A. One, because burst damage across the board has been nerfed because of the health pool changes. It doesn't feel that way if you're a tank player. I know, I understand, I'm with you dude. Hey, we're in the same boat, we're on the same team. I get it, it doesn't feel that way. It really isn't that way. But to everyone else, they don't die as fast. So, sustained damage becomes a little bit stronger. And on top of that too, uh, basically, what Soldier can do is keep reapplying the DPS passive, which is you take 20% less healing for two seconds over and over and over each time he shoots. So every time you get shot, you get 20% less to healing for two seconds. Soldier with high rate of fire, continuous fire, hit scan, keeps reapplying it over and 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 over. This creates a snowball effect really quickly um, where you're getting 20% less healing the whole way through. And then if you also have a Discord on Zen, you get Discord on top of that, you're taking 20% more damage. So especially on tanks, but even other characters as well, you can find yourself blowing up faster because you're taking 20% more damage and receiving 20% less healing. Soldier is one of the best characters, I would argue, at applying it. So plus the hit scan changes, it's hard to hit miss shots on him. Good recoil control, Soldier can be really powerful, especially on the flank. Another one I would say is pretty goddamn good is Ash. Ash got a major buff to bomb. Ash got a major buff to bomb. Where Bob's damage went from 14 to 17 per bullet. Plus Bob also applies the 20% debuff. Plus Dynamite also applies the 20% debuff. So what has happened is Ash doesn't really need a mercy pocket anymore because the breakpoints have changed anyways. So you don't need the Mercy Pocket. So you're able to play Ash without Mercy now. And Bob is probably the best player in the game. And it's not even close. Bob is arguably the strongest and scariest ult right now. I can't think of an ult that's scarier other than maybe EMP. EMP is the only other ult I would argue is scarier than Bob. If Bob comes out, everyone freaks out. Like everyone's like, ah, oh, shoot the Bob, shoot the Bob, or like back out or, or go in or like push, push, push. Like it's the, like, oh my goodness. Brig Rally? I would argue Brig Rally isn't as scary as Bob. Bob Bob makes everyone run in terror. You have to run. Brig, at least it's like Rally, You like you try to get away from her, right? But Bob comes for your ass. Bob comes for them cheeks. He wants you and you can't you can't do nothing about it. It's terrifying. So Ash I would say is a pretty big winner. It's a pretty big pretty big winner. Bastion um I would throw Bastion at least in a solid B. Honestly, could even go A. Am I going to do it? Yeah, you know what? No, not as good. No, okay, B is better. B is better. Okay, I, I, I wanted to do A, but honestly, that might be my tank bias showing. Um, this is a solid B plus, though. So here's the reason why. One, hit scan change, of course. Uh, but two, Bastion is terrifying. Uh, Bastion does a crazy amount of damage. Um, and hey, you know what? Sometimes you guys are better visual learners. I, I even, I've got stuff for you guys on hand today. I've got so much juice for you guys. I, I'm taking care of you today. So here we have a May and a Bastion. Uh, and remember, there is no Discord Orb that is applied to this May at all. 
because the Discord order is applied to the Bastion. I don't know why they have Discord wrong, but it doesn't matter. So, anyways, um, yeah, you can't headshot in Bastion tank form. That's not a thing. So it's not headshots. That's literally not possible. Um, but yeah, Bastion go burr. Uh, and so against especially Winston, although you can play around it, it's hard though. Winston, Ramatra, Orissa, kind of queen too, Zarya, Malga, Bash, sorry, Hog, and Rhine. Bastion gets extremely good value. Extremely good value. But Bastion versus Ball is pretty shit. Because if what happens is, if you pop tank form to go after Ball, Ball just leaves. You just roll away. That's it. And then guess what? Now you're on like a 12 second cooldown. And after that 20 second cooldown starts, you just go back in with your Tracer or Sombra and Bastion goes boom. So Bastion is not good in the current meta that's being played in like really, really high level play. But against like most players, you'll probably get really good value, especially people that play Ryan, Ryan, Ramatra, Hog, Zarya, Queen, Malga, even Winston too. Uh, Winston, you can do it, but it's tough. Um, but yeah, Bastion's very, 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 very good. And then if you have a Zen on top of that too, it's just good night. It's just good night. You're just dead. All right, next up, Cass. I think Cass is being hardcore slept on, and I argue maybe could even put put into B, but I think Bob puts Ash above Cass, and Soldiers reapplying the damage more often puts him above Cass as well. Cass being hardcore slept on, though. Um, because he has 275 HP now, he's so much more tanky, can stay in the fight a lot more, uh, still hits good shots. Like, you can hit shots easier because of the hit, bigger hit scan projectile sizes and being able to stay in that fight longer means you're a lot more impactful. Yeah, your hinder doesn't mean anything now. Hinder's f terrible, but if you buff it, it just becomes oppressive. But also at the same time though, hinder's pretty decent against ball. It's actually pretty decent. You're just not gonna kill the ball. The only thing you're gonna do is that you buy time for your Zen to discord the ball and then your tracer kills him because Realistically, the thing that keeps Ball from running over everybody right now is Tracer. So, I guess Sombra too, but mostly Tracer. Uh, but Cass is still pretty good. I think in a ranked game, you could probably get away with playing Cass quite often. So, pretty decent. Yeah, double headshot kill. Not too bad. And it's not too hard to hit headshots with uh, increased shot projectile sizes too. So, all right, next up, Echo. Um, there's some good and there's some bad with Echo. Uh, good is you have bigger projectiles now, so Echo feels like you can get more done. However, though, because of the increased hit skin changes, you actually die a lot more. So I'm kind of tempted to put her towards C over B. Um, but I've seen some Echoes put in some work. Um, but I think the hit skins are probably better. The thing is, though, those few Echoes I've seen are still really, really good. So you can make her work. And definitely if you hit the sticky combo, because the stickies are bigger too, right? Like the stickies, the stickies plus her left click are all bigger. And her beam is bigger as well. So her beam's bigger, her left click's bigger, her stickies are bigger. Um, and her echo copy got buffed. Um, so you, if you copy a tank now, it actually makes sense. Because you have an extra like 100 health on, on the tank copies. So you can actually kind of survive when you copy a tank now. Um, when before you would always copy a support just to use whatever super impactful ability they had. Don't get me wrong, copying a support is probably still the right play, um, but you can copy tanks, you know, which is nice. So, it's pretty decent. Uh, Echo's pretty decent. Uh, Genji. Um, yo, I'm gonna keep it real with you, dude. I think Genji's pretty damn good. I think Genji's pretty damn good. Probably one of the biggest winners from the bigger projectiles uh with dive being hard meta and everybody going crazy and like speed is king speed and survivability is king and with hit scans being so strong um genji can really get up in their face and really go hard and the only reason i'm not going to put him in s is because i think there's three other dps that i want to put in s that are better um 
And I don't think Genji's on their level, but he's close. He's very close. If I had to put him in order, I'd probably put him... Eh, if I had to put him in order, I'd probably put Ash over here. Maybe Genji in the middle of these. Yeah, you know what? Actually, yeah, yeah, that, like, that looks good to me. I'd probably do this. I would say, eh, you know what? You know what? Yeah, let's do this. I think, yeah, depends on the map. It's very map dependent. These two are tied. Those two are tied. But uh, yeah, I, I think Genji's very, very good. Very, very good. Um, Blade Blade is kind of useless, but you can get some kills with it. Kind of. Um, sort of. Eh. Eh. The big thing is the shurikens and dive being hardcore meta more than anything. But, you know, it is what it is, I guess. You know what I mean? So. All right, next up, Hanzo. Hanzo, I would say, is probably one of the bigger winners of the projectiles. Um, he's not great, but he's not bad either. I think that people think that Hanzo's bad are just like not giving him a chance. Because you can definitely do some work with Hanzo. It's just a lot more annoying. Um, and it's tough, you know? Because... You're not gonna get your one shots, but you hit so many more shots consistently that in like regular like ranked play, you're gonna get you're gonna get good value. I would not put him above Echo. Mm, I mean Echo's whole thing is being in the sky, being fast, it's way easier to hit than a Hanzo. Hanzo hits more consistent shots, especially on your back line. So I think that Hanzo's probably slept on uh more than people think. The only reason you don't see Hanzo as often is because Hanzo isn't good in dive. And he's not very good against dive. So if you have Ball, Trace, or Sombra running at your back line, Hanzo's terrible. I get that. That doesn't mean Hanzo's bad. You have to look at this list in a, in a, like, in a comparison that because Hanzo's B... If he gets shit on by S, that doesn't mean Hanzo's D. That's not how it works, right? That's not how that works. If Hanzo gets shit on by the S tier characters, that doesn't mean he's a bottom tier character. If we're talking in a world where we have, let's say, B tier characters and C tier characters or whatever, which one am I rather having on my team, a Hanzo or an Echo? I'm probably taking the Hanzo over the Echo, if I'm honest. If we're talking like soldier and Hanzo, you're probably taking a soldier over a Hanzo, but can a Hanzo beat a soldier? Absolutely. It's just not gonna be as good. That doesn't mean just because it loses in the current meta, it's just gonna get, oh, it's F tier, bottom character. Like, come on, let's be real. But I think Hanzo slept on quite a bit. Junkrat. Junk is horrible. Horrible. I would argue Ryan's worse, but Junk is horrible. F terrible. Bottom tier. It's not even close. <sighs> Poor Junkrat. So you might be asking, why is Junkrat F tier? Junkrat's F tier because the DPS passive is very, very useful. You don't apply the GPS pass very often because all you can do right now on Junkrat is spam chokes. Because the reason for that is the other playstyle of Junkrat was the scary delete you in one shot, which means that they like jumped in with a mine, left click through a mine, and they explode you, right? And so basically what ends up happening is with the changes that were made, Junkrat can no longer one tap you with a left click mine for, for sure. Like you can't, it doesn't work that way. So. That means you have to play them on maps where you can spam chokes in small, small passageways. But the problem with that is even if you're hitting your shots pretty consistently, let's say you hit two out of five mines through a choke or three out of five shots through a choke, you're only applying the DPS passive three times through that time span. While as if the hit skin shots that are much faster are doing it more consistently. So, even Tyre technically got an indirect nerf because projectiles are bigger. So you can shoot the Tyre easier. Like, even Tyre got an indirect nerf. You know what I mean? And, you know, there was times where if you got put in a Junkrat trap, it was a death sentence. 
but with extra health, there's a lot of times you survive it now. You know, even as a tank, like, like especially as a tank, like, you know, you there were times you died before as you were in a junkrat trap. I don't think I've died in a junkrat trap this season. I don't think it's even happened. So, you know, it is what it is. Anyways, um, yeah, junkrat's probably the biggest loser of the DPS. Uh, May, I think May is not the best but has a good spot on certain maps and certain things like may is just like may now is just a f tank character that's really it uh her like left click potential with icicles is kind of gone so like if you're like a dps or a support you're probably not scared of may at all not even a little but if you're playing ram sig queen uh, rissa not as much but zarya maga hog Ryan, you're just you're gonna get walled off and just you're gonna not have a good time, you know um, So yeah, it's uh, Not a good time to say the least it kind of blows uh, To play against May, but at the same time though may also got big nerfs because her freeze gun uh, also Doesn't do as much damage to you uh, Scaled wise because it still does the same hundred damage per second but the problem is, uh, now everyone has more health, so the time to kill is longer. Which means that you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna get this kills that often. But you do get the 20% less healing passive while you're shooting them. So again, anti-tank ability. Because you're, if anything, when you're left-clicking them, you're gonna be left-clicking the tank to slow them down. Plus have a wall up. And you have 300 HP, so you're probably not gonna get one shot by their tank. So everybody's running at them, and you're just gonna die. So... Yeah, but anyways, uh, Farah. Farah, I think it's a little early. Um, I'm just gonna put her in B tier. Um, I do think it's early for Farah. Um, I think that there's probably still time for people to learn how to play her. I think there's potential. This one's too hard to really give like a definitive answer at this current moment. I could easily go go back to C. I could easily come up to B. But the thing is, is like the character's new because she got reworked. Um, and there's definitely a lot of good like I've seen seagull player and seagull looks really really good on her um, But also at the same time you have bigger hit scan changes People aren't used to the new abilities the rockets are faster. There's a lot of changes that people have to get used to um, So I wouldn't I would take this placing with a grain of salt um, Have you expected any scrims yet? Are you talking about like the ball tracer? You know what I mean like that one? Uh, the Lucio Zen. I, I've seen a little bit of that. I haven't... If you're talking about Farrah stuff, I haven't seen anything. Um, but yeah. Farrah, Farrah is way too early. I, I, I'm I not sold on her being B. I just gotta put her somewhere, and I think she could be better uh, than people think. Take it with a grain of salt. Don't kill me. Reaper. Um, you know, unironically, I think Reaper's really good. I think Reaper's actually unironically really good. Just in general, it's curious. I'll, I'll, I don't want to spoil it too, too much, but yeah, I've seen, I wouldn't say I've seen, I saw, I, I watched a lot of uh, the Face It tournament yesterday. Like I was watching Emong and Karki play in between queues. Uh, I saw everybody's running like the same comps, but yeah, anyways, Reaper. Um, You have an 80% win rate on Reaper. Yeah, Reaper is insanely good. Basically, you can just tank consistently. And okay, let's go through this list. What's Reaper good against? Not really, but but still threatening. Yes, not really, probably not really, but like, again, not what you really pick him for. Yes, yes, can be yes, 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 yes. And I mean like shut down potential in all of these and even in Winston, yes as well. Um, so you have extra health and you literally can't 1v1 Reaper on a lot of characters and so in ladder play, you don't have any follow-up um, in a lot of times. Uh, and so what ends up happening is because everybody's just playing team deathmatch in their own sort of way. If your team, or sorry, if you're playing against a team that has any kind of coordination on you as a tank, you're, you're just gg And you can actually win a lot of games by just tank more than anything, um, which sucks. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, and I've seen a lot of Reapers that are very, very good and like hard pop off. 
and they survive more. They're tankier. They still do the, they still chunk you down because they're really high damage, um, but they're tankier than they ever were before. So I think Reaper's hardcore slept on. And if it was a rush meta, Reaper would 100% be played. 1000% Reaper would get played, but unfortunately Reaper rush is bad. So, you know, all right. Um, I'm going to save this one for last because I think it's time we finally get our first S tier DPS, which is Sombra. Sombra is insanely good. A um, couple reasons. One, you're playing ball, so she's good versus ball and with ball. She's good against Doom. She's good against D.Va. Uh, can be with Winston. So, you know, as Dive is the preferred playstyle in the Four Horsemen uh, uh, of Dive at the moment, Sombra has a good place. Don't forget, Sombra got buffed and got a uh, buff to her EMP, so it locks you out for three seconds. And so at this current moment, EMP is a fight winner. Every time I get EMP'd, you pretty much lose. Every time. So, yeah. The hardcore meta right now, uh, at least in high-level play, uh, is Sombra Ball. And we'll, I'll, I'll reveal more as we keep going. Um, but Sombra Ball, very, very powerful. Extremely strong. And what else you can do on Sombra is when you're playing ball comps, you can go around hack health packs and your ball will love you because the ball is not going to get any healing from the rest of his team because the healing goes elsewhere. And I'll talk about that in a couple minutes. Um, but yeah, Sombra, extremely useful. Sombra players are winning this season. Symmetra. Um, I think it's still early for Symmetra. I wouldn't say I'm sold on her yet. I think that she's underperforming and being underutilized, but I also think that's because Dive is super strong. Um, Symmetra is not the best versus Dive. Uh, so I think at the moment, like it's not like she needs like buffs or changes. It's just like she can't two tap you, right? But she also doesn't get her beam ramped up. So there's not really a reason to play her in a lot of places. Um, even places like Lijiang Tower, where Symmetra is always notorious, been pretty good. Or, um, what's another good example of a really good Symmetra map? Uh, I'm kind of blanking. Lijiang is like the first one that comes to mind. But even on those maps, uh, you kind of don't really need to play her. You know? So, it is what it is. Um, there's better picks, but I think that... She didn't benefit as much as some other characters did with this season. Torbjorn, I would also throw into this tier. Um, although I think Torb is probably slept on quite a bit. Um, there's... Okay. So Torb and Bastion kind of occupy the same space at the moment of the tank. Right? The only difference with Torb is that his is the tank plus the tracer. So if there's a Torb that's dominating... Tracer, like a Tracer that's dominating, Torb can be pretty good um, because you can survive Pulse Bomb now. You have your Overlord gives you Overload gives you 400 HP, so Torb's actually pretty decent. You know what? Actually, maybe I'd put Torb above Symmetra. I would put Torb above Symmetra. You know what? He's a very low B, low B, right? Better than Pharah, but low B. Um, just because the spam and the bigger shots is nice. Uh, but he's not like insane. Bastion, I would say, is better uh, for a lot of situations. Uh, but Torb did take some L's uh, with this spam. Uh, I talked to Siegel about this. And the reason why he thought that a lot of projectiles felt not as good is because basically in Overwatch for years, projectile was more about uh, inconsistently hitting shots, but higher impact on those shots. So Torb, when you hit shots, doesn't feel as impactful or um, threatening because you have to hit multiple good shots in a row. Well, as before, if you hit one good headshot, like on a tracer, they're dead, right? But now you have to hit multiple and it's not as consistent as hit scan so that you've lost that impact power for not enough uh consistency does that make sense so like the consistency was always lower but impact was higher they brought them closer together so impact is lower consistency is higher but the impact is much lower than the consistency came up 
So Hitscan ends up becoming the much bigger winner, while Projectile ends up being a bigger loser. Torb's big thing, though, is because Dive is hardcore meta. Turret's nice to have, um, with the constant applying of the 20% debuff, plus Tracer and Sombra being annoying. Uh, but I wouldn't say Torb's very good. I wouldn't say he's, like, the worst, but that's mostly because, like, meta, like, Dive's good. Otherwise, I probably would have put him in C. Next up, the other one that goes in the high tier meta play, but overall, honestly, probably one of the best characters in the game is Tracer, and it's not even close. Tracer is the best DPS, uh, destroys absolutely f everyone, and Tracer can be good in almost literally any situation on any map. No, actually, I'm gonna go on a limb, I'm gonna say in any situation on any map, in any team comp, Tracer can be good. You can make it work in anything. Like if you become a DPS one trick this season, become a Tracer one trick. The reason why Tracer is also good in the current thing is that Tracer is really good against ball. Also really good with ball. So if you have really, if there's a menace of a ball on the other team, you just chase him around the entire game. I'm not joking. That's literally what you do. You just chase the ball the entire game and kill him. Can't do anything. There's, I, as, the, as the person who plays ball versus really good Tracers, it is awful when you have a really good Tracer chasing you around the map the entire time. It sucks. But... What also happens is you apply the 20% DPS passive, and Tracer's Pulse Pistols also benefited from the bigger projectiles. So bigger projectiles, so you're easier to hit shots, and you apply the 20% debuff, which means that when you dive on somebody, you're making them take less, less healing, so you can cut through support healing, one, easier, and two, when your tank then follows up with it, you actually kill them a lot faster because they're taking less healing. You can't, their supports can't save whoever you're diving. You will kill them if you have coordination, which is why in high level play, this has become hard meta. Granted, I'm not saying you should play ball every ranked game and win every ranked game because there's going to be times where you're not going to have support and it's not going to work. But in high level play, there's a reason why this has become meta. Tracer is one of the big, big key points and probably, I would argue, the key point other than one other hero that is holding it all together. Uh, next up is Widow. Um, I think Widow's very good this season. Very, very good. Granted, hardcore dive kind of shits on her. But again, S tier is reserved for basically hardcore high-level play meta. A tier and below is basically ranked. Um, like average rank experience you can pick A tiers like almost game in and game out do really really well everything below that obviously scales but S tier is mostly just like hardcore scrims hardcore meta like will be the top level meta is the best comps in the game but probably not every player is going to go along with it but the reason why Widow is insane is because of the bigger hitbox or the bigger projectiles the bigger hitscan shots and so Basically, you can have Widows that become server admins, and they just kill 2-3 a fight, and there's nothing you can do against it unless your team goes full dive. And on not every map, that's totally going to be super viable, and especially on things like, uh, you know, you need follow-up. Like, you can go ball and harass the Widow, for sure, but if they're hardcore peeling their Widow, you might not kill her. You're just going to be annoying. But if you have a Tracer or a Sombra follows up, yes, you'll kill the Widow. But then again... You're swapping everybody to play against the Widow, and you might lose because of that. But then you also have games where no one's going to swap, because that's how ranked works. So you're going to get a ton of value. Especially, especially if you can, on maps like, say, Rialto, where the enemy team refuses to swap. Like, they do not want to swap. It's going to be insane for you. So Widow is definitely a big winner with the bigger shots. But I'm sorry for my silver players who could never aim. That doesn't mean your Widow's all of a sudden going to be insane. Um, I do apologize for that, because you still have to hit your shots. So, Anyways, though, moving on. Okay, this one's a little bit out of pocket, uh, because this is technically not the scrim meta, uh, but I would also throw Sojourn in the S tier. So, even though she's not the... Uh, what everyone is, like, super high-level playing... You can pretty much pick Sojourn every game and still win. I would say Sojourn is insanely good in most all situations. But again, in that high level play, when I put the supports up here, 
when I put the supports that are going to be up to here, I'll put Sojourn off to the side just so you know that I'm not talking dive. I'm talking like everything out of extremely coordinated play. Sojourn is insanely good. This is the only exception I'm making into the S tier. But Sojourn, she's not S, come on now, she is not an A. What? You just said she's not an S or an A? Okay, I don't even think you even know what you're even talking about, but Sojourn is insane. Have you not? Have you guys not played against like the server admin Sojourns? It, it's insane. You, are you guys nuts? Are you guys not played against like the actual Sojourns who take over the entire lobby? Come on now. You guys, you guys can't be serious. You guys can't be serious. Sojourn's insane. Are you guys nuts? Like, listen, there's always, like, one or two, like, bronze player takes, but, like, dude, you, some of you guys are, in, like, there was enough of you to make me, like, stop and look and go, wait a minute, are you guys crazy? You know why Sojourn got a buff to the 25%, like, her, her railgun doesn't go down to zero, is because of low-level players not knowing how to play Sojourn, right? So, like, I'm sorry to tell you, but, like, most people that you're, you're probably playing against don't know how to play Sojourn. Sojourn is insanely good, which is the whole reason why I'm making the exception and putting her in S tier is because what I'm saying to you with this A tier and below is like most ranked experience and beyond you can get away with these while S tier is more of the coordinated play high level scrim meta or like extremely good ranked games, but I'm making the exception. Oh, I put her in here. The exception for Sojourn because Sojourn, even though she's not in that like coordinated dive, you can still destroy every game on her she's insane she's insanely good so anyways anyway we're gonna move on you guys are some of you guys are losing your damn minds brig a tier right i would say brig is a solid a tier um the reason why brig is at a tier is because she's really good in dive or versus dive but but she's not the best this season. There is a better one. And I've actually seen the return of the Overwatch 1 comp of Brig Zen. Brig Zen has made a quite a bit of a return on ladder. And it's awful. If you know Brig Zen... Sorry, if you're an Overwatch 2 player now, you don't understand how powerful Brig Zen is. You don't know. I'm sorry, you're too young. Like, you legitimately just don't understand. I'm sorry to tell you. You just don't understand. You weren't there. Brig Zen has the potential to be the most overpowered and most oppressive support lineup you've ever played against in your entire life, and you don't even know it. You don't even know it. I wish I, I wish I lived there. I wish I lived in the land of not knowing. I really did, but I had to play against it for a year, and it was terrible. Brig Zen can be insane. It can be awful because what happens is, Brig is really good against his dive. She's very tanky with it. Granted, there's some changes so you can actually cut through her healing a little bit better, which is good. However, though, she's still one of the best anti-dive characters in the game. But not the best at the moment. Kiri. I think Kiri's slightly overhyped. I think she's very good, but I think she's slightly overhyped. Let me look at this actually. Hold up. Who am I gonna put? Nah. Yeah, actually. Okay. She is slightly overhyped, but she's not. Actually, who am I? Mm... I might have to move this one. I'm not sure yet. I'm not 100% sure yet. I might have to move this. For now, we'll leave it here. She's good because she's survivable, but I think that she's not as good as people say. Right? Like, some people still freak out about her and be like, oh my god, she's insane. And yes, she can hit more shots still. But... I, I think her rush is probably her most insane thing this season, right? With all the other changes. I don't know. I think she's slightly overhyped. But I'm okay with an A placement, actually. I'm okay with it. Let's, let's, get, to the, let's get to the real ones, right? S tier, and it's not even close. Honestly, I probably should put him in his own tier called Zen. Am I really going to do that? Maybe I should. 
I'm going to make this the S plus tier. This is S plus. This is the pretty much you can play anything in this category, no matter what, period. It is insane how broken Zen is. And you know what? I was one of the first people forever that have talked about how broken Zen has been just because of Discord Orb. I think the rest is not that bad, but it kind of went off the rails when they added him the kick. You know, okay, you try to give him some survivability because Dive was strong in the beginning of Overwatch 2. I get it. But then eventually got 225 HP. And Discord Orb is still really strong. But hey, you can LOS it for two seconds and you can't put it back on for seven. Hey, that's pretty decent. <sighs> but his orbs are bigger. Heal Orb got a massive buff that where when you put it on somebody, you can LOS them for five seconds. So you know what the meta is in high level play? Like this S tier, S tier plus giga meta is your Zen just keeps the orb on your tracer the entire game. And as long as the tracer peeks back in at some point within five seconds, she literally never loses orb. She has orb the whole game. The whole game. And so Zen has 275 HP plus the discord orb. So Discord Orm applies the 20% damage. Everybody takes 20% more damage. Plus the DPS passive of 20% less healing. If you get Discorded and you try to get shoot at somebody while the DPS is shooting at you, it's good night. It's GG's. I thought it was 225. This season, everyone's health got buffed. So a lot of the all the 200 HP characters are now 250 HP. Zen being 270, 225 is now a 275 HP character. So, basically, having to cut through 275 HP, plus no fall off, plus kick, which by the way, if you didn't know this, kick with a discord orb on it does 75 damage. Kick does 75 damage. That is old Rhine Swing. Let me say that again. Zen Kick plus Discord is 75 HP. That is old Rhine Swing. And it boops you. And he has no footsteps. He has zero footsteps. So it's hard to find him sometimes. If you get discorded, you're f***ing dead. Granted, Zen is killable in the current meta because you run Tracer Ball and run at him at mock speed and try to kill him before he kills you. It's the whole reason why you play Tracer Ball is because Ball is the only character in the game that could potentially survive. It's the only character out of the tank roster who can potentially survive the Zen. That's why you play ball. So when you ask in the beginning, but how did ball go from D tier to S tier in one season with like no buffs? It's because every tank player is running for their life. Zen literally is gatekeeping half the roster by himself. Actually, he's gatekeeping three quarters of the roster by himself. I don't give a f if Zen is your main. I don't care if you think that the character's fun. I don't care. There shouldn't be a character in the game that turns off three quarters of the roster for just playing the game. And if you sit there and you say, well, you can just LOS. Yes, I understand you can LOS. And you know what? You're welcome for that change because I've been screaming for something to happen for Discord for forever. Because otherwise, he's no longer a glass cannon. He has a boop kick that does 75 damage, has zero fall off, has zero footsteps. He destroys everybody that sh you shouldn't there shouldn't be a character that literally turns off another player's ability to play the game consistently just by putting a button on him. sorry dude i don't care i don't give a f that's bullshit and if you sit there and go well i don't you just buys yeah no fucking shit why don't you go play f tank for 100 games against zen and go see how it feels yeah you won't you literally won't you literally won't so don't care uh, there's a reason why every tank player is talking about it. It's not like, oh my god, literally every tank player. It's not just me. It's literally every tank player. Okay. Anyways, so I think we've talked about Zen enough. Let's talk about the other one really quick. We're going to jump ahead. 
the other S tier DPS or other DPS, or sorry, other S tier support. S tier Lucio. And you know, you sit here. You know hardcore meta right now? Is Lucio Zen? You know that's what that's what the comp is. Let me let me point and paint a picture for you really, really quickly, just so you can see it. This is the scrim meta. This is scrim meta. I'm gonna put up the other ones to back down in a second. But this is the scrim meta. This is top level play, by the way. This is it. This is it. Ball, Tracer, Lucio, Sombra, Zen. This is what you play. I'm not joking. This is the hard this is the top level meta. Lucio and Zen are being played at the exact same time. Why do you think that is? Let me explain. Lucio has extremely high survivability, plus he got the boot he got the buffs to his left click, boop, which hits like a truck now. Because it got further, boop, and the lockout, like you can't fight against it. The lockout got increased too. So the boop is insanely good. Which granted, Lucio needed. And his projectiles are bigger. So Lucio is almost like a fourth DPS running into your back line. Because he's hard to hit, he does pretty good damage, and he and he can hit pretty consistently. So Lucio is pretty good, plus his beat is valuable in this current meta. Because everyone is playing pretty much like fast heroes with lower HP anyways. So that extra burst engage is super nice. Now granted chat, we're looking at a meta where it's arguably the lowest heal comp in the game. That's, that meta right there is arguably the lowest healing you can have in the game. There's nothing lower than this, right? Mercy Zen's not lower. Mercy Lucio is not lower. Brig Zen's not lower. Brig Lucio, I don't think is lower. I think this is the lowest healing comp you could te technically make in the game. Now, why do you think that is? Because healing is not valuable in this meta. Because of the 20% debuff from Zen... Plus the 20% debuff from DPS. So what's the point of healing? Just all in for kills. So you have the Tracer who's consistently orbed. You put the orb on the Tracer, so she gets healing. Sombra is invisible, so you're just assassinating people anyways. Ball is running for his f life because the Tracer's hunting the ball, the Sombra's hunting the ball. But also at the same time, the ball is your engagement tool. The Lucio dives with the ball, Tracer, and uh, Sombra. The Zen is probably the most vulnerable in a lot of times. But there's a few things. One, Lucio can help keep Zen alive pretty decent, decently with Boop, but not really. Zen's kind of like everybody running him kind of character. Um, so Zen can die, but you need to have like two, three people on him. You know what I mean? So is that really healthy? You know, like, is that really healthy? Is that good? Because what ends up happening a lot of times is... Discord goes on to the ball who is diving you. The tracer comes running back because they're tracing. Remember, the tracer and Zombra have been chasing the ball the entire time. So the ball goes to dive your Zen. Your Zen discords the ball. The Sombra who's been chasing him and the tracer's been chasing him go for him on the slam. The enemy tracer goes for you on Zen. And the enemy Sombra goes for you on Zen. But you... Your team's Tracer and Sombra have the, your, their ball discorded, so their ball goes boom. Your ball's still alive. You might die on Zen, but your ball is still alive, and your ball goes back with the fucking, with the fucking Sombra Tracer, because now they don't have ball anymore, because their ball died, and they kill kill their Zen, because then it can go 4v1. And so it's like, what the f***? It's so crazy. It's actually insane how fast play it is. And don't get me wrong, it's kind of exciting. It's kind of nuts. But that doesn't mean it's not like kind of broken at the same time. You know what I mean? So anyways, Lucio Zen is your S tier plus. Really good in both. You can run them with Ram. You can run them with... You can run them with Ram. You can run them with Diva. You can run them with Sigma. You can run them with Doom. You can run them with Joker Queen. You can run them with... Ryan like you can you can literally run these two game in and game out and win no matter what so pick your poison you know honestly I think Lucio is way healthier than Zen is I think Lucio I, maybe a hot take Lucio is a little bit broken but I'm okay with it give them their time they deserve it the Lucio players deserve their time in the sun the Zen players do not I think BAP is really good this season I think BAP is very good arguably being a little bit slept on probably in some some cases just not as good as say Lucio Zen. Bap's really good though. I would argue that Bap is better with 
Sigma Monkey Diva than say like Anna is at this point. Oh, I forgot to put Sombra or Soja on the very right. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. This is like my out of pocket S tier pick. Bap is just a slightly worse Sen. No, 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 no. Or way worse, if anything. Uh, because Bap doesn't apply a 20% debuff to you. So Ben is that Bap is good though. Don't get me wrong. Bap is very, 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 very good. In some circumstances. But then again, if you're running the hardcore dive comp, you can kind of blow up Bap. But he can also kind of defend himself. So definitely on the better end of the of the other supports. Life Weaver. i this is a hard one, because I've only played against one good Life Weaver, and every other Life Weaver I've played against is pretty bad. So I don't know if it's just like a skill issue on some of the Life Weaver's part or what. Yeah, let's go D. I think D's probably better. Here's why. He doesn't do anything but healing, and healing this season's worth worth a lot less, right? I don't think his healing needs a buff. It's not that. It's the healing doesn't matter. Look at the meta. So at the hot top of the meta, it's literally no heals. It's all about mobility and damage. So a character that can't really apply good healing because Discord debuff plus damage passive debuff means that, let's say you're trying to heal a tank. If they have a Zen and their DPS are shooting at him, their tank is going to receive 40% quote unquote less healing um, than they would effective healing. Uh, so what's the point of playing a character that's going to only do healing, you know? His pulls do save, though. Yeah, but then your tank has to walk back up to the front anyways to hold space, and so you're just dead. Like, now what? <laughs> you know what I mean? So, like, don't get me wrong. I think there's some really annoying parts of Life Weaver. Um, I still don't know why they changed his pedal so you can't, like, fire strike or punch through it. I think those were really dumb. But healing is just not valuable. The passive stacks? No, 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 no. The DPS passive does not stack. It reapplies every time you take damage. But it Discord Orb is a second one. So you have Discord Orb, which is 20% more damage incoming, plus the DPS passive, which is 20% less healing. So effective healing at that point is 40% less because you're taking 20% more damage and receiving 20% less healing. Does that make sense? Um, by that, Ana, I'm gonna throw Ana in like the C tier. I think Ana's pretty bad in a lot of ways. I don't think she's that useful. I think there's places she can be played. Um, I'm even tempted to maybe bump her up to B because she can be useful um, on certain maps with certain comps, but she's just not as good. Like, she can work. The reason why I'm I'm, I'm kind of like leaning towards B is because Ana does have a place on certain maps and certain comps. Junkertown, I think of with like Ana Brig or Ana Zen. Uh, Ana Zen, honestly, is actually really good. Uh, Numbani, I think of with Ana. Maps are she can stay really far away. Those are pretty good for her. Um, but then again, though, if they run the full dive ball tracer Sombra, she's probably she's gonna get smoked. But that doesn't mean you can't get away with playing her in a lot of places, because like Ana's good against Zen. Sorry, Ana's good against Ram. Ana's good against Junker Queen. Ana's good against Mauga. Ana's good against Ryan. Zarya not as much. Um, and Arissa not as much, but definitely there, right? Um, but I but I would say like she's good with she's good with Winston. Pretty okay with D.Va, although I would argue Bap might be better. Bap is definitely better with Sigma. Ana, Doom... Honestly, Bap's probably better with Doom. So, this is like a very much in-between high C, low B. I'm gonna go with B. Because I think she definitely is like has some value in certain places, say as like Bastion does. But she's not played all the time. And I would argue is probably not the best. Next up, Ilari. <laughs> Yeah, Alari's f bad. Alari needs help. Like, Alari fell down a well. Alari is just, oh boy. Alari's not good. She's not, she's not good. Uh, there's a lot of reasons for it. One, her turret isn't as good because everyone has more health, so she's not healing as much effective health because, like, you can't heal them to full as fast. Two, if they're taking damage from people, the damage passive or the DPS passive being kicked in, so the turret's doing even less healing. Plus, her whole, like, focusing beam thing is supposed to be, like, super high healing like, very quickly for a small amount of time, but that also gets affected by the 20% tw DPS passive. And if they have a Zen, that's an even more, so they're not... You can't heal through it. You literally can't. And, like... Her beam is supposed to be like, you will not die, you know? The, the trade-off is that her bullets are bigger, so she hits more shots, but the problem is her time to kill. If I was to buff Ilari, 
I would probably buff her beam and I would probably buff her rate of fire. I wouldn't buff her damage. I wouldn't buff her turret. I would buff her rate of fire and I would buff her beam because the beam is just not useful and her rate of fire is too slow. Like if you want to have her have the ability to still get kills like she did before, she needs to shoot a little bit quicker. I think more damage is too scary though. So um, I would definitely be open to like rate of fire changes. That would be my thing for her. Mercy. Uh, yeah, Mercy's in the mines, dude. Mercy's down in the dumps. <clears throat> Mercy's down in the dumps. Mercy's struggling, dude. Mercy's struggling. Here's the thing, though. Mercy can definitely be good in certain situations with, like, the Sojourn Pocket. However, she's kind of, like, literally only a damage boost only. Why would the Mercy means put me on a hit list for this list? You think Mercy? You think the Mercy players are saying that, that she's really good right now? Really? You believe that? That's crazy. Dude, some of you guys are off your rockers today. Genuinely. Like, seriously. I don't know how many times, like, you got break bonked in a ranked game, but, like, hey, check that out. Because Mercy's not good. She bad. Uh, and so, basically, uh, the way you play Mercy now is basically just damage boost only. Don't even heal. It's no point. Like, actually damage boost only. And you just pray. Like, if you have a DPS that's 1v1ing another DPS... You just sit there and hold damage boosts on them, even if they're getting shot at, and just pray that they beat them. Because with the 20% passive, I think you only do... What is it? Is it 45 healing? I think it's 45 healing per second. So you only do 44 healing per second on Mercy when you're getting shot at by another DPS. So just damage boost. Just play dam just damage boost only. Damage boost only. That's that's literally how you play her. She's not good, though. The only saving grace I would say for Mercy is if you have an extremely good Sojourn player on your team. And I mean really good Sojourn player on your team. If you just pocket them around the map and just let them be the server admin, you'll win games. But then again, that's not your impact. That's your Sojourn's impact. You're just amplifying their impact. Because that Sojourn will still get those kills without it. And last but not least... Moira. I would argue Moira is probably the best support outside of Lucio Zen at the moment. The Dark Horse. The thing nobody saw coming. Now why, might you ask? Survivability. This is the season of survivability. It's what it is. This is the season of survivability. Moira heal is nice because it's a nice AoE heal. If you're all running at the same target and just her ability to survive the entire time she just puts out a lot of damage she puts out a good amount of healing and she doesn't die first every fight which is all you can ask for for a, a support player at the moment that's really it just play super aggressive play super going in don't give up did you guys see Karku last night and me playing dude i had a game with Karku where it was a 2v1 on point it was just him and I said, ah, f it, just reset. And he goes, no, I win these. And he killed the Tracer. And then he killed the Doomfist. By himself. Full HP, both of them. 2v1. <laughs> <laughs> he killed f both of them. And I was so floored. I was like, I was not familiar with your game. I was not familiar with your game. I apologize for that one. Basically, it's all just about surviving. And plus, they buffed her, her Shuck. I, I was very low on Moira in the beginning. I thought Moira wasn't going to be very good, but because of the way the meta shifted to super, super like high survivability, it's been insane. Survivability, yet you put Mercy in D when Mercy movement is one of her best features. Okay. All right. You want to be explained then? Sure. So if we're talking dive, uh, you have Tr Somber Tracer. You're not going to out outrun either of those. If you're talking hit skin, all the hit skins have been buffed. Ash, Soldier, Tracer... Uh, uh, cast everything their bullets are much bigger so you can hit more consistent shots uh, Mercy's whole thing about is survivability and plus her sympathetic healing which is healing yourself gets turned off quite a bit because you're getting 
20% less healing, period, uh, when you get shot. So Tracer's applying it constantly. Sombra applies it constantly. Soldier will apply it constantly. Widow, you're just fodder at that point if you peek your head out. Uh, Genji will still chase you. Um, Cass, if you're peeking it, obviously again. Uh, but basically all the hits can just you consistently and you don't do much healing. So Moira does way more healing than Mercy does has AoE damage slash AoE healing, both of her orbs, which means that she can be do healing and damage while at the same time surviving. Mercy can't do that. Mercy can either choose to do damage boosting, choose to do healing while also surviving. So you get two of those while, while instead of getting the three of those, Moira puts out more healing, does way more damage, and also typically Mercy damage boost doesn't work well with dive characters. So you're not gonna be damage boosting a Tracer, you're not gonna be damage boosting a, a Sombra, you're not gonna be damage boosting uh, your your Ball or your Winston or your Zen uh, or your Lucio. Like, the, it doesn't work with those characters. Like, Zen, I guess, maybe, but then what are you going to do with them? Like, you're just going to sit in the back and just hold the thing on the Zen? You're basically useless. Why not play Lucio and just go in? Why not just play Moira and just go in? Why not play Ana and actually have an impactful ability? Like, that, the survivability that's there doesn't mean shit because you're not having an impact on top of the survivability. It's survivability plus impact because... There's no point, there's no damage breakpoints other than Hanzo Arrow that makes sense for her at the moment. Ash, even. You don't, what's the point of damage boosting an Ash? You don't change your breakpoint, but Ash can still hit two shots and get a kill. So that don't make no sense. So I, I love when people try to take things that I'm explaining and like go, I mean, excuse me, um, you said this. Okay, there's more to it than just that. Go ahead, go ask any of the good Mercy players. I guarantee you they'll tell you the same shit. Anyways, though, bottom line. If you are a normal ranked player, normal grinder, aka not the 99% of this game, A tier and below is probably for you. Uh, which is also, again, why I put Sojourn in the S tier. Uh, and the same reason why a lot of the Silver Andes in chat went, what? The second I put Sol Sir Sojourn in S. Hey, listen, I'm sorry to tell you, these characters right here are not for you. These characters up here, you can play those. But these characters right here in S tier are not for you. S plus, yes. Uh, a tier and below though, uh, are probably what you can get away with in most of your ranked games and be okay. So, again, it's still pretty early and it will probably shift um, as changes get made because I think there was already Alec Dawson, the hero design guy said that they were gonna probably be making some changes very soon. Um, because there are definitely some big losers this season. I would argue that if you look towards the bottom of the list, there's some big ass losers down there. Uh, so this could obviously change, uh, but at this current moment, I will say this is very fun. Yeah, Ryan blows. Yeah, junk blows and a lot of characters are not good. But I will say it feels very fresh. And yeah, dying to Zen consistently is no fun, but at least the game feels fresh. And so... As you can see by the amount of ranked games I've played, one more time, I'm having a good time overall. So, and yes, this is in four days. It's from Tuesday to today, Saturday, and I haven't even played yet today. So, 202 ranked games played from Tuesday at 2 p.m. to today, Saturday at 8.30, and I haven't played any ranked, so, or at least today. Yeah. We've played a lot of games. And I guess if you don't understand that, I'll give you one last way to understand. Uh, I'm about to unlock the mythic from Moira. <laughs> just, just to give people a kind of a, an idea of how many games so far I've played. Uh, so I think I have a, t a decent idea. 